Welcome in our co-hosts on this uh, fine, fabulous Friday. He is the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, two-star. Good morning, Rob. It's a wonderful day after It would be better if I turned your mic on. He is the Admiral, two-star. <laughs> I'll say it again. Good morning, Rob. It's a wonderful day indeed. Great to have you here, Bill. It'd be even better to be able to hear you while you're here. <laughs> that's right. Well, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah, that's the yeah, extra yeah. to be seen or heard. Can we meet him? He is the Sarge, also known as the Badger, Michael Height. Good morning. Great to be here. Great to have you. Is my now. mic prone up? Yeah. So we, uh, <laughs> I learned my lesson. We we drifted away for a while for calling Mike Height the Badger. We did, and uh, he took uh, offense to it. Our so yeah, so he uh, he 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 likes to be called the Badger, and for good reason. I'll I'll do what the the kids on my football team do, and they they jump off side or they get up and they go my my my, 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 my like I know it's your badge. You're the one that they flagged. Everybody knows it's your badge. You don't have to tell us. So I'm accountable, coach. If you were accountable, you would have jumped off side. <laughs> Give me a lap. Give me a lap. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Let's welcome in Steve Pearson. He is the editor in chief at the West Virginia Independent Observer. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Is my mic turned up too? <laughs> Sounds clear. <laughs> well, it's good. You know, it's like this is the substitute for turning up the heat. You just turn up the mic to get the hot airs around here, right? <laughs> Bill, give Steve your mic too. We'll hear Steve in stereo. <laughs> <laughs> There's some improvement if we do that. <laughs> uh, Steve's a frequent contributor to the program, and if you've uh, seen our candidate forums, you know Steve is an active part of that as well. Always great to have him on the program. Steve, we had uh, another Steve, Stolifer, the uh, commission president in Jefferson County on the program earlier this week to talk about this situation in Middleway regarding a water bottling plant and the uh, capturing of water for use in the production of this uh, water that will get bottled and shipped out to, to customers and, and what have you. And the residents are very concerned about the water supply around that plant. What do you know about this situation and, and how concerned are these residents? Uh, they're very concerned. So, um, you know, Steve uh, Stoff was on the planning commission. You know, um, I was at the planning commission meeting. So we spent about five and a half hours together uh, last Tuesday because that's how long the meeting went. It went till after midnight. There were about 150 people uh, that showed up to uh, citizens, residents of Jefferson County, and from all across the county, all political persuasions, you know, a lot of farmers, a lot of local people, uh, all just wanting to have questions. And that seems to be the, the, um, the, the top issue is, you know, there's just a lot of concerns and people are thinking, feeling they're not getting the whole story. Um, are they getting the whole story? Well, you know, I mean, the, the company um, who's, who's, putting this project together, you know, did a water study, they did some test wells, and they drilled, and they found some, uh, you know, bacteria that, you know, appears to come from, you know, uh, manure from, you know, likely from the cows that graze around there. And it kind of seems what people think they're getting is there's a whole lot of manure, you know, coming out of this, uh, this project. Um, you know, and when I first, I first heard about this, uh, it was a legal notice in the Spirit of Jefferson, uh, just before Halloween. <clears throat> so I put a little, notice of it you know i downloaded the documents and it was very you know limited it's a concept plan right now so which is basically just like a the equivalent of a pencil sketch you know there's no engineering to it it's just someone drawing boxes and saying we're going to put this stuff here and this much traffic and they had notes about you know the jobs and all that and i talked to some guys from the state i said well is, is this a you know good kind of project because you know some of these these come in it's like is it going to be a pilot you know is it going to you know be you know roads they said no they're you know, this, this, they're talking about they're going to fund road improvements. They're talking it's over a thousand jobs. You know, this is mm -hmm. this is a good deal. And you know, as the onion or you know gets peeled or the curtain gets pulled back, you know, and, and people start asking questions. So their first pass at it, they said, "Well, we're going to you know, yeah, five hundred and fifty jobs per shift." They put that on the on the notes. Just to, that determines how much parking they need. Um. When they resubmitted the plan because they got rejected for that plan last week, now they're down to 150 jobs per shift, which is a, a big shift. And part of this, I think, has to do with the fact that the company who is presenting this isn't the company that's going to operate this. They're packaging this up for sale to some other um, entity. Is, yeah. that, is that sale prearranged, or is that still uh, to be done by the market? Still to be done. They, they've told me that they don't have one specific buyer, that they're shopping it to other buyers. So we don't know who the end person is coming in. Steve, excuse me, going yeah. from 500 to 150 just leads the impression there's a tremendous amount of uncertainty and there's a lot of smoke and mirrors. That's that, Well, that's sort of where I was going with that because, you know, again, when I talked to the guys at the state, they were, you know, like you know, lots of promises, lots of goodies, and 
you, you know, there just doesn't seem to be a lot there when, when people start to, uh, to probe. Um, you know, there was a, um, uh, if, if you look at the, uh, their website, they talk about community engagement. So they, they, they put up, they, they had a website that talked about selling the property as like 230 luscious acres on the Opecan. Now, I mean, if it was a peach farm, you might say luscious, but you know, it's an old industrial site. I mean, luscious seemed a little bit, you know, exaggeration. But they just brought up a new website, and it talks about the, the water bottling, and they have a little section about community engagement. And the Spirit of Jefferson guys dug into this because they said they, they did donations to the Girl Scouts of America and the, and the Jefferson County Fair and the, and the 4-H. And they can't find any records of these donations. It's kind of like you're, uh, we were just talking about before the show, the delegate and these, these awards. Um, and as far as they can tell, it seems like, well, perhaps what they did was they bought some Girl Scout cookies at, and some, uh, some muffins at a bake sale. And so this is the kind of puffery. You know, it's like uh, we're not quite sure what we're getting. And we won't know because they've already said that, well, we're, they're making promises that this company isn't going to do things, but they're going to turn around and sell it. To someone else it's kind of like you know when back when they were talking about the solar projects you know we were well, these are going to be the farmers are going to own the land and they're going to be the good stewards and these companies are going to come in and lease it but the farmers will be there to protect it and the first one that comes in the land gets sold it's a multinational company that's itself being sold to you know sovereign wealth funds like you know saudi arabia's national you know fund they scraped off all the topsoil they just they don't care they're not really you know, embedded in this community. And that's that's an unknown with this project as well. And this is the first time hearing that it's a fixer-upper. Yeah, well, a flipper, you know. It's, you it's, know. And, and, and again, it's unclear. You know, they, they talk about they're going to still own some of it and they're going to bring someone in to operate. But the bottom line is the people that are talking to the county today don't know what's actually going to be built on site there and how it's going to be operated. And, you know, they, they went and they talked about uh, – uh, the number of truck traffics. You know, they're, they're, they're not going to anticipate needing to do a lot of improvements to the roads. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, it, you know, the, the Department of Highways is already scheduled to improve the, uh, put a signal there at, at Middleway in uh, Route 51 and, and Lee Town Pike. And aside from that, they're not going to be doing anything. And they're talking, they said like 160 truck traffic uh, trips a day. But on the new plan, they're, they actually wrote, it's got 406 trailer parking spots on the site. So, uh, you know, it, it's hard to say, you know, is it 160? And, is, and what are the water concerns the residents have, Steve? Well, the water um, concerns, you know, there's still a lot of farming uh, down in that area. Most, you know, there's no water service. You know, this is all, everybody has a well. The, the village of Middleway is, is, is on wells. And uh, apparently the water table is very high there. Um, you know, the wells are very, are, are shallow, you know, a couple hundred feet. And so the concern is, is that this will drop the, uh, the water table. And you had several of, the, several of the planning commission members, this is what they focused on, because they're, they're farmers, they understand water. And um, the one thing that the company wouldn't commit to, I think uh, Commissioner Stolfer uh, talked about the, the location of the wellhead. Well, you know, the, the wellhead's always at the surface. So the, the, the question was, where do you put the pump? You know, and one of the commissioners said, well, if you're saying it's only going to drop the water level by five feet, well, just put your pump at 10 or 15 feet. And that way you'll know, you, I think he used the word uh, creaming the top. But if you dry it up, you know, you're, you're run out of water, but the residents and the farmers won't run out of water. And they wouldn't commit to that. Um, but yeah. that's only part of the problem, Steve. If the aquifer can drop, that's different than the aquifer drying up. And there is some concern, at least in times of drought and in, uh, in the eastern panhandle, that the aquifer is actually dried up. Yeah. Well, it, again, it's it's a question of how fast it can recharge. That's right, too. Right. And how do they measure that? Well, that's the thing. They they did one study, and according to the the, the professional geologists that I spoke with, you know, that's really not enough uh, to you know tell what the the long term effects were, and. and you know, when, when you look at the study and, and you read through it, and, and by the way, the, the only reason the study uh, came out is because, you know, they weren't going to release it. Um, but apparently they had a little mishap when they drilled 
the, one of the first wells and they blew out into the wetlands because the casing, I guess they hit a void and it was connected to the surface because it's karst. So the local land is under a, a conservancy easement and the farmer noticed, well, there's mud all up and down the side of his trees. So the DEP came in and forced them to remediate it. And that's how the, the, um, the um, well drilling report and the, it was, was in, the, in the public. And apparently they told the engineering uh, firm who did the report that this, the purpose of drilling this well was for a, a, a development on that trailer park site, it's an, about an eight, nine acre trailer park site. And it says right there that, you know, we're, this is for a future development on the site. And it distinctly it made a difference between that site and the bottling plant, you know, or the other site that they own. This, you know, it didn't reference the, the two. So the type of testing they did would be for, you know, you could easily see if they were putting up like a water tower or water tank, you'd have this high capacity well to recharge that tank and then, you know, you wouldn't run it. You know, so unclear whether the type of testing they did, even though they did it for five days, whether that's sufficient, you know, for the type of sustained, you know, output that these guys are talking about. You know, when you drill, there's a lot of wells of this size around the county, you use them for irrigation because you need a lot of water all at once, but you water, you turn it off. You know, then you water, you turn it off. You know, what if you're talking about a bottling plant and they're talking a million square feet? Uh, the the a, a three hundred thousand square foot bottling plant is would be a very very large bottling plant in the United States. There's just not that many of that size. There's no plants that are a million square feet. The largest plant in the, in the country is Poland Springs at about 860,000 square feet. Um, so this would be a very, very large uh, facility if it's all used for bottling water, which means they're gonna use a lot of water. So, you know, the well they drilled, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's, not, it's, it's not comparable to say, well, you use this kind of water with irrigation. You don't run your irrigation well, you know, 24 seven, you know, 365 days a year. It's, it's, does, it's very does, intermittent. Does anybody know why they chose Jefferson County? Were they recruited in by somebody? Um, and and why are they using the aquifer? I mean, there's there's two two rivers that border Jefferson County. Yeah. Why not pull out of the river uh, and, and put your, your location somewhere close to the river where you could pull out? Or close to a highway. I mean, that's that's the question. Right. The, why why what, 3M? Is, did, is somebody trying to sell that? And Well, they and, did. Yeah. Well, the, the history of 3M is, you know, the, it was a woolen mill. Uh, sure. And then, uh, you know, 3M you know, got the property uh, and they uh, because it had um, the water because that's what they needed the water for. They did high-end uh, printing plates there. Mm -hmm. They ran that business, had a couple of subsidiaries, sold it to Kodak, who ran it for a few years and shut sure. it down. So it's been been shut. So the plant's always been there because of Turkey Run, you know, and the surface water. But that that process is you take the water out, you use it in the process, you clean it up, and you put it back into the stream. So most of it goes back in. It right. doesn't interrupt the, the flow. Um, it, it, it's clearly for the water, but no, I haven't heard, what I haven't been able to understand or find out is, you know, where they recruited, you know, how did they find out about this, this place, uh, why it's there. They're, they're, the emails they've sent and their, their website say, well, it's, they want to be close to the I-81 and the East Coast. Now, I don't know if you've ever been down the middle way, but it, it's it, not close to I-81. No. no. And no. the roads there are, are very narrow, and that's, that's the other concern that the residents have is you have a, an, an old village. I mean, these roads are, I mean, it's not that long ago that these were dirt roads, and they were widened a little bit when 3M uh, you know, expanded its, its facility in there. But, I mean, you're talking, you know, the width of the between, in this studio, is the width between you know the houses in some places on on this road? Well, so. but didn't 3M have trucking? Kodak Kodak have trucking in and out. They of there? did. So, I but mean, it, a different. Kind, I talked to the guys. You know, the, the, there's some people who used to work at there. You know, ran the plant. They're still mm -hmm. down there. They they live there. A, a different kind of process. I mean, they brought in aluminum rolls. You know, uh, and then they would make these plates. It was a very um, high value. So it wasn't like commodity type stuff where you're just sending a lot of stuff out in bulk. They had, you know, chemicals, 
They had the, the raw materials. They would make the plates, which was a very intensive uh, process because these were considered like the premier uh, printing plates. You would, sure. you, you would know that. And um, so there, there was traffic, but it wasn't as sustained. And they certainly didn't have... So it's not that the tractor trailers and large vehicles can't get back to there. They can. It yes. would just be uh, a much more robust uh, amount of traffic, uh, a large truck in and out It sounds out like, I mean, if they're talking 406 trailer spaces, I'm going to do right. the math. I mean, how many you know trucks per minute um, you know, coming out of Gray Street, trying to make that left turn onto Lee Town Road, yeah. going up to, to, to 51... It's 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 going to be a significant increase, sure. and you know when you talk about, you know, if it was a, you know, when you look at like the Rockwell facility, they built Northport Avenue, you know, connected it right in there, you know, and it's it's it's, it's very quick to get onto Route Nine and then to get onto Eighty One, you know, here you're talking <clears throat> miles of of country roads, yeah. you know, before you even get close to a major road. Steve, another aspect of a discussion with uh, Starper this past week was the approval process. Uh, he left the impression that if the concept was valid, neither the planning commission nor the county commission could reject the proposal. You, you study county commission a great deal. As, how did that ring to you? Well, so the, the, the process is, is very specific. This is a, a major site plan, and they're also doing a subdivision of this. So there's multiple steps to it. There's the concept plan, which, again, is kind of like a, like a pencil sketch. You know, like you're gonna, we're going to put this many buildings. We're going to put them here, and it's basic to evaluate. Can you actually fit that? Um, and did you check with the alert the highway department? Did you alert the historical landmarks commission? But there is also, within the context of the zoning ordinance, is this a permitted use? You know, do, does, do you have all the things you need to do this here? And that seems to be the rub because they came in with the one parcel, the old you know, industrial parcel, and it just said bottling plant. And this is what Commissioner Keyes was, was focusing on. It's like, well, okay, you're saying this is a bottling plant, but kind of implicit in there, you, know, you, know, you, you need water. Where's your water coming from? Now, they're getting the water for the bathrooms there from, from Berkeley County, and Berkeley County wasn't excited about that either because, you know, you guys have a – it's not like you've got a lot of water sloshing around that you want to, you know, give away. But she said, well, it's like if I had to go in and appraise a house – and someone was saying, well, it has three bathrooms. And you're looking at, well, yeah, I see three bathtubs, but I don't see water coming into the house. So those aren't bathrooms. You know, I, I'm sorry, I can't appraise it. It's just the same kind of thing. It's like there's, there's something missing here. You know, we can't tell whether this is a permitted use or a conditional use because you haven't given us all the information. And it's the same thing that we ran into with the, the solar companies had to get a, an amendment to the zoning ordinance because there wasn't anything that said, ah, you can permit a, a, an industrial solar facility. You know, we, we allowed solar on top of rooftops for you know residential and commercial use, but this sort of solar facility that connects to a grid is different. And and you know, Kara uh, Keys had, had a point when you know, related to this uh, on, on another topic. When you're doing something on your land, you know, it, you, you've got by right uh, uh, rights there. But if you're connecting in somewhere else, you're going across someone else's land, either public land or in the case of things like you know, these utilities where you're running a pipeline, where you're running a transmission tower, you're taking someone else's property. And uh, the question came up when there was a subdivision uh, in Carneysville, and Commissioner Keyes asked, well, you're going to make road improvements on your property, but if the state says, well, you need to improve the road down here, you're going to have to widen it, which means these people down here, you're going to have to take out eminent domain, their stone walls, take them out, dig out their trees. So you're going to take their property for the improvements on your property. So this is where we get into this sort of, you know, like, well, property rights, but am I taking someone else's property rights to, you know, benefit my property rights? And I think that's the, where this battle is going to be fought is like, who has the rights to, you know, take this water? Um, there was a gentleman who's a, uh, I see him a lot at the uh, We the People meetings, you know, very, you know, staunch, uh, you know, property rights person. And he says, well, you know, I mean, it seems reasonable. I mean, if you have water that lands on your property, you can use the water that lands on your property and sinks in the ground. But, you know, once you get done with that, 
you're sucking all the water that falls on other people's properties, you know, out of the ground for, for your use, and it's not going to be available for them. So, you know, we start to get into the philosophy here, and you know, that's where, um, you know, this sort of a, it's probably going to take some lawyers and legislatures to to unravel this one. I don't think it's, it's as easy as uh, three Christian minutes Stoller says. left, yeah. Steve. Uh, the uh, the lake test that was run, yeah, was that was reported that they they re- they drained. The, and drain they ran water from the lake, and there didn't seem to be any stress. Do you have any more details about that? Well, again, that that's a question of I'm not a geologist. I did talk to a geologist who you know works is licensed in Virginia, works in Virginia, West Virginia, Shenandoah Valley, familiar with the karst, and you know their reaction was well, the report meets the minimum requirements. You know, if you you're required to file a report, you you file a report. But if you're interested in in making sure you're protecting the water source. That's not enough, um, and you know the the concerns about the the TCE uh, plume that's on the site are valid because if you if you start pumping water from one place and you lower the level, you increase the pressure, that pl- those plumes migrate very quickly. So it, it it won't necessarily go to the water source, but the people who live between the water source, you know, and the plant where the pollution is, which is the village of Middleway, who has shallow wells they very much could be affected by that. So it's a valid concern that you can't analyze from just this one report. And the same thing with the the drop in the water. You know, over a, the, the lakes is on a parcel, I think it's about uh, 13 acres, so it's about a 10-acre lake. You know, th- the time they ran it, the discharge of the water back into the lake, which is, you know, Bob Tab pointed this out in the meetings, like, well, you're taking the water out of the well, you're putting it back into the lake, well, of course, you're not going to see a lot of drop in the lake, and it's such a big property. I mean, you're just not going to see that, even though five days, it's not enough you know, with just one study. So you need a lot more, uh, you need to be testing a lot more wells, a lot more extensive study, if your concern is to protect the water. I have a minute left. What's next in this saga? Well, they ha- the company has uh, submitted a, uh, a second plan, uh, meeting on uh, December 17th, another public hearing, um, I'm guessing it'll be another long one, so hopefully they'll get a bigger room with more comfortable chairs uh, for, for this one. Um, I think the community, I, I don't think from what I've heard so far that the community feels that the second submission has really addressed, if nothing, if anything else, it's raised more questions because they talked about having three wells at the uh, first meeting. Uh, this plan only shows one of the wells, so, um, and the the limits they've said are not necessarily the limits that the end user will be following. So there's still a lot of questions of how how much of the information is really being shared. Where can we get the next uh, or the, even the current edition of the Independent? Online Journal? at ObserverWV.com. We'll be, uh, as soon as I get off of here, I'll be typing all this stuff up onto the Internet. I won't hold you another minute then, sir. Thank all you, right. Steve. Good to see you again. Thank you. Take Thank care. You.